Hey you guys, how you doing? So I thought I'd uh, start a new series today. I had a game this morning that, that inspired an idea. Uh, so I thought we'd do a, a series on the deadly sins of chess. Because it's great. Uh, if you've been following me for a while, you know I've got this checklist which tells you the good and the virtuous things that you should be doing. Okay, and the things that you should be checking and looking out for and stuff like that. But there is a flip side to that. And there is uh, probably a corresponding list of chess sins, of which we are all guilty, you know, and uh, which will um, haunt us and lead us to eternal ruin and damnation. Uh, but it's this kind of, you know, original sins very much that, because we, we've all done it and, and it's terribly tempting and it's terribly easy to fall into. So I'm going to share my sinful nature with you guys and we're going to start with one that is very common, particularly at uh, shorter time controls, but um, probably also creeps in at other levels. And it is, I've been racking my brains and the best phrase I could, I've been able to come up with for this is the time spaff, okay? And it will all become clear when I show you myself sinning in this way. Um, and I'm playing against somebody rated 1127, but we both get like mid 80 accuracy in this game, which is a 66 move game. So it's actually a very decent game. And it's a five plus five blitz. Because that's all I'm playing at the moment. I know I'm I'm not on top form, so I'm just I'm just having fun. But it's a bit weird, really, because it's like I'm trying to get my chess mojo back by playing blitz, and that isn't how you play your best chess, and it's also uh, not how you improve. However, I do think that it is a barometer. You know, it gives me a measure for how I'm playing. So you know, if I if I can't beat 1200s, 1300s uh, regularly at Blitz, I probably shouldn't be playing Rapid either. Okay, so um, let me take you through the game and I will confess my sins as we go. So it's, it's actually a very, very good start, right? And basically, I have this game won on about three occasions. But what happens is that I then rush. I also, I think, have a lead in time, although there is an increment, so time is not such a big factor. Um, but I, well, I'll show you, I'll show you, I'll, I fall into this thing. So we have an e4, e5, king's knights, and now we have the scotch. So what I'm playing against the scotch is this Steinitz variation, absolutely loving it. You can play a Freddy Krueger style approach by throwing out the f-pawn, but it just isn't as good. This Steiner variation is just so much fun. Uh, it really suits my style. It's kind of wayward Queen Vienna style as black, so what's not to like? Okay, so you bring out your queen to here. Obviously, I'm attacking this pawn, and the threat is it comes with check. Okay, now this is very common. Knight c3 defends the central pawn from the queen. Now, bishop to b4 pins the knight, so it can't any longer defend the pawn, so the pawn is now not defended. So now white has to do something else, and queen d3, again, very common. Now here again, I play the, the best move, which is knight f6. So knight f6 adds a second attacker to this pawn, and it's only defended once, because this guy ain't defending, because he's pinned. So there's only one, de one defender in the form of the queen, okay? So, now white decides to trade off knights. I recapture with the d-pawn, which again is correct. Because I'm ready to castle, white ain't. White's got a bishop to move and is still dealing with problems at home. So, um, I mean, even even bishop out and long castles might be a possibility at some point. Or bishop d7, long castles with a discovery. You never know. This is not great move from white. Um, I mean, I, I can simply take here with check and attacking the rook and attacking the queen. And because of this, it basically forces a trade of queens, which is not really in white's interest right now. So trades queens, um, and now this knight obviously can't recapture because it's still pinned. So now I'm threatening to take the knight, takes, takes, 
oops, um, with a fork on King and Rook. So again, he's he's being forced to do things that maybe he doesn't want to do. So Bishop D2. Now here, I think the engine wanted me to castle, I think. But um, yeah, I don't think this was fantastic. So, I mean, I really wanted to double his pawns up here. But instead I bring his king out into the board, which is okay. Now bishop out to f5, targeting this pawn, so the king's got the only defender of the pawn and the only defender of this knight. But I'm getting ready to castle long, putting my rook straight on d8 with check. Could be fun. But he gets in there first with the check. I drop my bishop back to block. He attacks my other bishop, and now I long castle with check. So, as very often in this uh, Steinitz variation, black is actually up a pawn. So I'm up a pawn, although I do have double pawns here, right? We've both got, oh, I've, I've got the bishop pair, white has a bishop and a knight, so I do have a slight edge here. King retreats, and now I decide to take off the knight, split his pawns up. We've both got a light squared bishop. I'm, I've got one extra pawn, and I've got two pawn islands against white's three pawn islands, and, and these are doubled and isolated, so really not good. So I'm thinking against 1172, I really kind of fancy my chances here. And note, we've both still got four minutes on the clock. Right, so I bring out my bishop now targeting his rook in the corner. Rook moves. I push g6. And now he comes in. So this was, I think, a poor move because he's not attacking this pawn because it's actually defended by the bishop, which is itself defended. And he's not attacking this pawn because it's defended by the king. So I now play bishop e6, thinking, how about trapping the rook? And then thinking maybe about trading off rooks, okay? So I'm down to 405 now. He brings his bishop out here. I'm not concerned. This pawn is defended. And now I play an inaccurate move with rook d7. <clears throat> I mean, I have to say, this is first thing in the morning. This is the first game of chess I've played. And I'm just, you know, having my coffee sitting in bed with the iPad and, you know, messing about. But um, there is a point to this. I, I really ought to do a lot better with this because there was a far better move. Um, I should have played rook to d6, not rook to d7. So here I'm offering to trade off rooks. And yes, I have a slight edge. So yes, I will. I should go on to do have good chances in the end game. But if rook d6, his rook can't go there or there or, or onto the back rank, right? Then I've got king d8, and I should be able to win the rook, or at least force it to trade itself off for a bishop, right? I didn't, didn't see it. So I do this, and we trade off the rook. Okay, I'm still a pawn up. So basically, I, the only difference is I've got this extra b pawn. <laughs> Everything else is actually very similar. He throws in a check. I'm not bothered. I'm starting to look at the pawn majority on this side, so I'm thinking maybe my king should be on this side of the board. He throws a pawn forwards. I want to trade off rooks. He doesn't. I want to trade off bishops. He doesn't. I want to trade off bishops again. He does. But the, here I give up a pawn. Um, which was silly. And now, white has a pawn majority on the king side. I have a one pawn majority on the queen side. So king comes in now. I, I want to stop the rook from being able to come here. So the rook now has to move, can't go there, can't go there. He either has to retreat or go to f6. He retreats slightly. I trade off rooks. Right, and now we are in a king and pawn ending. And I have four minutes on my clock, apparently. Yeah, because we're, we're, we're playing quite quick here. Um, we had both advance our kings. I'm pushing my pawns forward, right? Block off this one. So now he's in a problem, right? Now we've got it so that uh, he can't push that because I simply take and I have a passed pawn. He can't push that because I take defended by the king with check and he just loses a pawn. And, and then I've got two attackers on this square, okay? So it's not great. Plus, I can very easily just block off all of these pawns on the queen side of the board. So he pushes a pawn forwards, I play a6. He pushes, I push c5. 
Now I have this kind of key pawn here. It's like I have a spare move that I can burn at any point if I need to. And we are looking at a position where either of us could end up in Zugzwang where we don't really want to have to move. Because sometimes you end up, especially when the kings are in opposition like this, right? if his king had to move, the only way it can go is backwards because it can't go there because of the pawn, right? My king's guarding these squares. So what I really want to do is, is force his king backwards, get my king something like here, right? Or to here, and capture one of these pawns. So now he pushes a4, and I think for 13 seconds, but I've got 3 minutes 49 on my clock, right? I push a5. And this turns the game from actually being winning for black to um, a dead draw. And it does end up in a draw. Because the move I should have played is c6. I should have burned my, my pawn move there. Because I played this move, it, <coughs> excuse me, it means that these none of these pawns can move. Clearly this one can't move, right? And then he moves his king back, which is a great move, right? I play this now, um, but bottom line is, and we end up in a foot race, okay? Now, this is what else happens. Up here I'm on 3 minutes 44, right? There is a theme here. Okay, I, I grab a pawn. We end up in a foot race. Okay, we get queens each. Um, and we end up trading the queens off. And now we kind of do it again. But these moves on my part, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, I am pre-moving everything. I'm pre-moving one, two, three, four, five moves at least. I take two seconds. Over, uh, not over this move, this is 0 0.1, okay? And this is key, because this also threw, threw the game away. I, ha I was in a winning position here, right? And I threw the game away. Why was I, I in a winning position? And what was wrong with this move, okay? Stop the video, pause it, check it out if you need to. What's wrong with uh, king takes c4? Okay, well, I'll show you how the game went. Then he takes there, right? And we both end up la la la, right? We both end up two kings, two queens. It's a dead draw. There's really nothing, unless he completely blunders by lining up his king and his queen on the same file and, or whatever, same line, and it's just not going to happen, because he's playing well. This guy's, the guy had a good game, and he offered me a draw, and we didn't draw, and then we drew. Okay, now, back up to here, right? So, what's wrong with this move? Well, it allows him to take this pawn, and then we are simply in a completely dead symmetrical situation, obviously. Okay, we have to get the king out of the way, one, two, three, four. He has to get the king out of the way, one, two, three, four. It's the same, exact same thing. And then we're going to end up in a complete draw. The better move was this. King there, and all my pawns are defended, and happy days. Now, he goes here, I grab this pawn. He comes here, I come back. He goes here, I grab this pawn. He goes here, I come back. And then I've got two completely passed pawns, and I've completely won. And he's totally stuffed. He's up a creek, right? But I didn't do that because I was spaffing my time away. And this, boys and girls, is the sin, the chess sin that I want to uh, share with you. Now, my opponent has 5 minutes 16 on the clock, right? We're playing with an increment and we've just played a load of quick moves, right? He's got 5 minutes. I've got 4 effing minutes on the clock, right? And I pre-move a pawn capture. Why? Why? It's not even that my opponent is in any time trouble. I've got 4 minutes 16 and I used 0 0.1 seconds. Like, I literally didn't even think about that move and that's what i mean this is what the time spaffing is basically i have a gift of four minutes 16 seconds with which to evaluate basically how many legal moves are there one two three four start again 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven legal moves. Eight legal moves, right? There are only eight moves. I have to move my king because my pawns are jammed, right? And obviously, this is the only good one because it defends both pawns, right? Yes, the king is, king is attacking that. Let's put it in red. King is attacking that. These two pawns are under attack. How can I defend them? Ugh. It's not rocket science, right? But I completely spaffed it away through the entire game by pre-moving, right? Um, and there was no call for it whatsoever. Just none. Uh, and it doesn't, you know, it doesn't matter if I'm playing a five plus five. It doesn't matter if I'm playing blitz. It doesn't matter if I'm playing somebody rated 1127, right? Because I'm not even playing like a 1200 here. I'm playing like a joker. And I deserve to throw the game away and, and draw. So I'll show you the... Um, this is how the game looked, right? So I basically had it won here. And I had it won again. And I had it won again. And every single time, you know, I blew it. So let's look at this position. This position, right? That's inaccurate. Okay, so I didn't exactly throw it away there. I should still have gone on to win, but rook to d6, much better. Why? Because whatever he does, I come over here and he forced, he has to go down the exchange. Happy days, right? And I, I then go on to convert. But then there's another one. Okay, so after this move, there's a worse mistake, which is this. Bishop b5 is a mistake. That gives away over two, two points, effectively, right? What's wrong with it? Um, I let his rook in, basically. There's nothing I can do. Uh, actually, that one's defended. But this is not such a comfortable position, right? Um, so the better move here, rook d6, let's figure that one out. Rook d6. I don't know. It's not quite so easy to see, but that's one that would merit a little bit more time. Okay. But these ones we, we've we've clearly seen. That's a great move, right? Blocks off his pawns. Um, I want to force him to have to move a pawn forward or retreat his king, right? That's best. And this is just a blunder. And now it says dead draw. There's nothing that, that you can do. I should have pushed c6, because if c6, now his king retreats, I come up, his king retreats again, you know? So, from here, it's, it's white to move. If he goes this way, I come in and attack this pawn, right? Um, so if he goes here, let's just figure this one out. Oh, it's not working. Okay, but the you know the the, the point is there, and, and maybe you're guilty of, of the same thing. Maybe you're guilty of this idea that somehow, if you just bash out your moves, you'll somehow fluster your opponent. And we all need to stop doing that. And that is the point of this series. So I've got one very simple piece of advice: that if you are guilty of the time spaff sin. Cut that shit out. Stop it, right? So what we're going to do in this series is we're going to focus on cutting out all that shit because we don't need to be doing that. Um, I think that particularly at the beginner level, then avoiding these chess sins will be far more fruitful and beneficial for your rating and help you get over the thousand mark and whatever than trying to study openings and tactics too much and any of that. No, we need to cut out the sins, cut it all out, move on. Okay, so thanks for joining me on this one and uh, it should be a good series. So uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you all soon.